In this video, I'll prove both parts of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. The first part of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus says that if f of x is a continuous function, then the function g of x, defined as the integral from a constant a to the variable x of f of t dt, is differentiable and has derivative equal to the original function f of x. To prove this theorem, let's start with the limit definition of derivative. The derivative g prime of x by definition is the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. Now g of x is defined as an integral from a to x. So g of x plus h is going to be the integral from a to x plus h, just plugging in x plus h for x, of f of t dt. g of x is the integral from a to x of f of t dt. By properties of integrals, the integral from a to x plus h minus the integral from a to x is just the integral from x to x plus h. Now informally, the integral from x to x plus h can be closely approximated by a skinny rectangle with height f of x and width h. And so this limit is approximately the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x times h over h, which is just f of x. But let's make this argument a little more precise. Let's let capital M be the maximum value that f of x achieves on this little subinterval, and lowercase m be the minimum value achieved. In this picture, they occur on the endpoints of the interval from x to x plus h, but they could also occur somewhere in the interior. But we know that f of x does have to have a minimum value and a maximum value since it's a continuous function by assumption on a closed interval. Now we know that the integral of f of t dt from x to x plus h has to be less than or equal to capital M times h and bigger than or equal to lowercase m times h. This is one of the properties of integrals and can be verified visually by comparing this shaded red area to the small blue rectangle, which has area lowercase m times h, and comparing it to the area of the big rectangle, which has area capital M times h. Equivalently, the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt divided by h has to be less than or equal to capital M and greater than or equal to little m. But the intermediate value theorem, which holds for all continuous functions, says that this intermediate value that lies between the minimum and maximum value of f has to be achieved as f of c for some c in the interval. Therefore, I can replace this integral in the limit expression above by just simply the value f of c for some c between x and x plus h. The value of c here depends on x and h, but as h goes to 0, c has to get closer and closer to x. And since f is continuous, this means that this limit is equal to f of x. We've now proved the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, that the derivative of g exists and equals f of x. The second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if f is continuous, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the antiderivative of lowercase f, which I'll denote by capital F, evaluated at b minus that antiderivative evaluated at a. Part two of the fundamental theorem follows directly from part one. Let's let g of x be defined as the integral from a to x 
of f of t dt. Then part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that g prime of x exists and equals lowercase f of x. In other words, capital G is an antiderivative for lowercase f. Now g of b minus g of a is by definition the integral from a to b of f of t dt minus the integral of a, from a to a of f of t dt. This second integral is zero since the bounds of integration are identical. So part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus is true if I use the antiderivative capital G. But the theorem is supposed to be true for any antiderivative. So let's let capital F be any antiderivative of lowercase f. We know that capital F of x has to equal capital G of x plus some constant, since any two antiderivatives for the same function differ by a constant. And therefore, capital F of B minus capital F of A is going to equal capital G of B plus C minus capital G of A plus C. The constant C cancels out, and we just get capital G of B minus capital G of A, which we already saw was equal to the integral from A to B of lowercase f of t dt. So the left side of this equation is equal to the right side, and the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, is proved for any antiderivative. This completes the proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus.